While you're sitting at home eating one too many slices of banana bread and reminding Netflix that you're still there, what's probably going through your mind is What is the best productivity software out there? But for real, now that many of us are at home adjusting to this new routine, it's more important than ever to find a productivity system that works for you. And depending on the person, that system can differ. Whenever I stumble upon a new productivity tool, I'm always the first to immediately click the link, sign up for a new account, and optimistically set up my whole life on the site. And over the past few weeks, I've been getting a lot of comments about this new kid in town who isn't super flashy, doesn't claim to be all that, but is already climbing the popularity charts. And that new kid is Rome Research. So I've switched most of my workflow from Notion, which I've been using for the past nine months, to Rome Research. I've been tracking my YouTube content, business leads, thoughts, to-do lists, etc. And now that it's been about a month since I started using Rome, I thought it was about time that I share more on what I've learned about Rome's philosophy, my criteria for switching from Notion to Rome, and whether this has all it takes to become my daily driver of productivity software. First, let's take a tour of this app and what it can offer. And as always, this video is not sponsored. I just wanted to share my experience using this fancy new app. So every day when you open Roam, you'll see your daily note, where you can scribble some thoughts, a to-do list, and reference other pages. And the left navigation bar makes this really easy to access alongside this graph overview page. Admittedly, I did not set up my room as well as others, so this probably should look a lot more like this instead of this. But this is essentially trying to emulate a mind map connecting all your ideas together. And if we go to a specific note, we can see that it's more or less a bulleted list. While it looks simple, this is actually what makes Rome so special. That's because on a traditional note-taking app, if you're going to do a brain dump of all your ideas for research notes or a script, you end up with this huge document that's overwhelming and annoying to scroll through. Instead, here, each bullet point is a toggle and can be expanded or collapsed as you see fit. And each bullet point can be clicked to make that its own page while still showing the breadcrumb trail. While it looks like all you can add is text, there actually is quite a bit of flexibility packed into each page. The text itself can be formatted using basic markdown styling and can also link to other pages and blocks. And within a note, the backslash command displays a menu of all else you can add to the page, like a file, slider, Kanban board, code, and even LaTeX. My favorite is the Pomodoro feature, which allows you to add a Pomodoro timer to boost productivity without leaving the app. Most importantly, what really makes Rome revolutionary is the bottom-up organization structure, which makes it what people call a second brain. If we look at something like Notion or Evernote or Trello, all of our thoughts are viewed from a top-down perspective in a hierarchy. So we have a set of pages or boards with several layers of nesting that lead to the idea itself. But Rome flips that idea on its head in an attempt to mimic the way your brain works. Because if you think about it, your brain isn't structured neatly into folders. Instead, it's composed of billions of neurons constantly firing, which means you have tons of tiny incremental ideas floating around that coalesce to form more concrete thoughts. Of course, this is not scientific by any means, but you get the idea. And several decades ago, this idea was actually implemented through the Zettelkasten method. And now, Rome is doing the same thing digitally. So whenever I find myself mentioning something a lot, I can put double brackets around the keyword, which automatically makes a new page and a new node with every reference to that idea. In the future, I can keep mentioning this node and continue to build this knowledge graph. And this is why people love Rome, and why it even has a cult following. In a traditional note-taking system, a small idea can get drowned in a hierarchy of notes and eventually forgotten. This graph structure reinforces these incremental ideas even before you start thinking about putting them together. This is all great, but I still have to figure out whether Rome is my perfect productivity app. So let's start with the wish list. First, it's got to be pretty. Now, when we take a look at Rome, it still has a pretty minimalist UI like Notion with a monotone sidebar and simple note-taking interface. And Rome does have some neat embed features, but is otherwise pretty lacking in the customization department. However, I'm 95% sure that this is an intentional design decision to not distract from the purpose of the app, so this probably won't change. Any productivity app needs structure, and this is where Rome shines, even more than Notion. The graph structure means that any keyword can be made into a page, and thus all your notes are inherently linked and easier to connect together and search. 
Because my tabs are always a hot mess, I tend to prefer desktop apps. But as of now, Roam is just a web app, so no Mac app and no mobile app. However, months down the line, this easily could change, so fingers crossed. Again, as of now, Roam is completely free. I'm not sure how long it can stay that way, so this is something else we'll have to keep an eye on for the months to come. And since using Notion, my wishlist has grown, so there are a few more things I'm looking for. First, I come to love using templates in Notion, either that I've created or found online. On Roam, however, there is no notion of reusing elements or stylized pages, since as it is, pages can't be customized that much, so most people's setups are probably pretty similar. And finally, I never thought having a community around an app really mattered, but it actually makes it a lot more exciting and inspiring to use. Rome does have a really active Twitter community and a Slack workspace for users, so it definitely checks this box. The question you've all been waiting for, does Rome have what it takes to be my daily driver? I don't know, but first let's break down the pros and cons. My all-time favorite feature that makes me want to keep using Rome is the collapsible bullet points. I know it's such a small thing, but it really matters. From a task management perspective, this helps me mark what's done by collapsing segments that I'm done writing, filming, or working on. And when writing, this helps me keep my workspace clean so I can focus on the task at hand without being bombarded by the clutter of everything else. And while apps like Notion do have a toggle feature, I love how this does it automatically yet non-intrusively. It took me a while to understand how the knowledge graph works, but once I got the hang of it, it actually is a game changer. This could be a great way to level up your journaling game by connecting different ideas that come up in your writing. Or for bigger projects that span months or even years, like a thesis paper, this could help piece together disparate pieces of information even if you don't consciously connect those dots. Now for the cons. My biggest gripe with Roam is that it isn't customizable enough to accommodate my typical workflow. I typically like to add highlighting, bold, italics, or all the above to my notes to make them pop. And I enjoy designing each page and board to suit its content. But with Roam, the formatting options are already pretty bare bones and just not built to be as flowery as I would like at least. The Mac app isn't a huge deal, but the lack of a mobile app makes it even harder for Roam to achieve that ideal of being a second brain at a glance. This is a problem with switching from any productivity software, but Roam makes it a lot harder because they lack integration tools to quickly upload or transfer notes from Evernote, Notion, or even Markdown. So you have to do it all manually, which could be a pain. This may be just me, but the nuances of Roam took a lot of time to adjust to, especially compared to Notion. For some, this is a worthwhile investment for sure, but for others, learning curve may just not be worth it. Now that it's been a month since I've been testing out Roam, I've come to the conclusion that this probably isn't the app for me, at least not now. And I really do admire the philosophy that the founders had when starting this app. And I'm sure there are a lot of people that will find this really useful for things like research, taking notes, or writing. But for me, I'm looking for an all-in-one productivity solution with a lot more features, which is why I'll be switching back to Notion. That being said, this is still a relatively new app, and I'm sure that in the months to come, they'll be experiencing a ton of growth. So I'll be keeping tabs on Rome over Twitter and trying out new features as they roll out. And yeah, that is Rome Research. If this is something that you want to try out, you can sign up on their site, but as of now, there is a waiting list. As always, I'm on the lookout for new apps to try out, so if you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please give it a big like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.